Welcome to Council of Geeks. I'm joined once again by Paul Scavito and Ryan and Daly. And as you may have guessed from Paul's maniacal grin, we're going to talk about the confirmed casting of Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. <laughs> And so, yes, I'm a little fired up about Benedict Cumberbatch playing Doctor Strange. Well, it's, it's um. funny. I remember when we talked when we did our, our Marvel roundtable, like way, yeah. way a while ago. You just you threw it out as a bit of fan casting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yep. and now, dreams do come true. Prescient. Prescient. <laughs> I I think that Benedict Cumberbatch can completely own this part, and in, in a completely serious manner. We've seen this arrogant character, arrogant aloof character before in the form of Sherlock. The fear being, are we going to see Sherlock again? Mm -hmm. My answer to that is no. Um, I don't think we're going to see that character again because he played something very similar in Khan. Okay. And they are distinctly different characters. I think that Benedict um, Cumberbatch has enough depth as an actor mm -hmm. that he can give us this different one. And I actually have a third example to point to mm -hmm. um, for this, which is that um, his depiction of Victor Frankenstein on stage. on stage is a distinctly different character from Sherlock from Khan. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you were to dissect those characters, they are essentially arrogant characters who are full of themselves and hubris, mm -hmm. and yet they are very distinct versions. They are very distinct characters. It kind of feels like almost fan desire willed this into reality. Because the, the, I... That scares me, though. Not because it gives him power. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Marvel is smart enough to realize when what the fans want is a good idea and when what the fans want is a bad idea. Yeah. But I think they're also tuned in enough to their fans to go, oh, you know what? They're right. Let, let's, let's go with that. I just like that vibe. Okay. I think everything that you said makes sense, and I agree with everything you said. I have one real substantive concern. Up to this point, I haven't heard Benedict Cumberbatch do an American accent that I liked. Hmm. And I think it is I, I think it's important that this character be American because he's not a grown-up Harry Potter. He is America's magician. He is not that old world type type of wizardry that you get from Europe and their mythology. He is a beatnik from Greenwich Village. Um, it, it's a very different take, and I, I think that is important that he be played as an American. Yeah, that's a fair point. That, that's, yeah, I that's, got nothing to, that's, I got nothing that's to my that. one. And again, yep. and maybe it won't matter. If, if everything else clicks, that, that is not going to be a deal breaker for me. No. The other sort of major Marvel casting announcement that came around was Kristen Ritter, fans from Breaking Bad and Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that had fans. She has been cast as Jessica Jones in the newly rechristened, aka Jessica Jones, yes. um, which will be the follow-up to Daredevil on yeah. Marvel's Netflix slate, which right. is confirmed to be coming out in 2015. I know of Jessica Jones. Mm -hmm. I never really read Alias. I've read, you know, what the notion, what the premise is. I think it's a cool idea. Mm -hmm. But this this is one of those properties that I'm certainly interested to see what they do with it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a dog in this race, though. I just don't know enough about her as an actress. She must have nailed the audition, I guess. Sure. I mean, they're going to have to show me something in a, a form of a trailer or something right. that's going to so, get me on board. Yeah, I watched um, I watched clips from that show and I've watched her doing interviews and she just she comes off as a very manic, high energy, mm -hmm. comedic personality, yeah. which is about as far as you can get from the source material as there is. Um, Jessica Jones in the comics is very abrasive. She's a hard character to like. I think in Breaking Bad we saw Kristen Ritter play some vulnerability and mm -hmm. some pain, but the character of Jessica Jones has much more of a hard edge. And I don't see that in the actress because she looks like she weighs 30 pounds. Um, and Jessica Jones looks like somebody who would start and win a bar fight. In the comics her story is dark. Her whole launch was one of the big impetuses for the for the Max line, right? Right. And Marvel, oh, there. and they made it an adult, uh, a mature reader's title. And I can see the Netflix series not going as dark as the comics do to go down that road. I, I think it's going to be tough balancing it, and I think we'll probably get a better sense of how far they're going to be able to push it when we see Daredevil, right? right. Because I I have a feeling that these series, these Netflix series, are going to be deliberately a bit darker and a bit more mature than the movies are. They're going to operate in sort of that funny gray area that yep. like the TV 14 yeah, yeah, yeah. rating operates in, which is 
more than PG-13, but not quite an R. Right. From what you're telling me, that's still a few steps down from what the actual source material is. It's, it would be an R. If they downplay that character a little bit, I have an easier time seeing connecting it with this actress, mm -hmm. who I see as much more of a comedic, almost flighty actress. But again, it, it boils down to trust. And yep. how many times has Marvel let us down? I was going to say that, that I, I think one of the jobs in front of um, Marvel for these shows, tonally, mm -hmm. these shows need to be different than, um, I would say, three things going on right now. One of them is S.H.I.E.L.D., and they also need to be in contrast to um, really mostly Arrow. Um, yeah. And um, which is DC's one sort of popular um, mm -hmm. television series, it's, and, and Gotham. Although Gotham mm -hmm. is, we could have a whole different conversation about Gotham and mm -hmm. what that is. But um, so I think what we're going to see from these is serious, mm -hmm. darker, not as dark um, right. as, um, as it could be. But mm -hmm. um, I think tonally, um, I think fans are actually going to be really happy with the stuff that Nef that Marvel is doing on Netflix. I I, I yeah, think they're going to be yeah. telling serious stories. I think they're going to be telling stories that mm -hmm. probably shock viewers from time to time. Mm -hmm. I think they're really going to be taking some risks. The the fact that it is confirmed to come out in 2015, so from Marvel in 2015, their whole mm -hmm. output will include. Agent Carter, starting in January and yep, going through which February. I'm super fired up. Um, followed yep. by Shield season two point five, Avengers: Age of Ultron. Yep. Daredevil, aka Jessica Jones, and Ant Man. Two movies, two Netflix series, and two different television series on <laughs> ABC. <laughs> nothing coming out from DC or Warner Brothers. Nothing coming out from Sony or Fox. Like yep. the superhero comic book world, I think is all, all Marvel, Marvel Studios next year. Yep. Mar Marvel okay owns 2015, and no. I, I, th I think we're all okay with that. So I think this is the perfect casting of any part ever, and uh, I think that just they made this decision for all of us, the world, and the next generation, also the children who are the future. And I think that p putting Benedict Cumberbatch in the role is going to fix most of what's wrong. Um, With the world? <laughs> I, I think that like we're gonna, once this movie comes out, we're gonna figure out that whole like global warming thing and like, like just peace. Um, 